by now you know uh, what EPGs are. You know that EPGs are used to segment bridge domains. And so for you to understand this new concept, that is a new concept of security zone called ESG, I want you to focus a little bit on the history or on the journey uh, of the security implementation on the ACI fabric. So where we started is what you see here on the left is uh, where many customers still are, which is uh, the deployment where each PG is mapped to a bridge domain. Uh, this is a very simple concept. It makes migration easy because you can easily take existing VLANs and existing network and map them to an EPG and a bridge domain. But ACI has been built to allow for more EPG in the same bridge domain so that you can create more segmentation uh, and more uh, precise security zones. Now, what if you need to have your servers in different subnets and yet you need to configure them maybe uh, in the same security zone, even if their subnets are different? Uh, you can do this very easily uh, by using a single bridge domain and by configuring multiple subnets under the bridge domain. And then you could configure EPGs that include endpoints of different subnets. Uh, this approach has not been very widely adopted because you're sharing the same broadcast domain. And ACI does a lot of good things to reduce the flooding, to reduce the art flooding. So it makes flooding in the bridge domain less of a concern, but many people still the design principles still call for different bridge domains. So they, this model has not been probably widely successful because of this reason. So we introduced a new concept. It's called Endpoint Security Group. Endpoint Security Group is a different concept of security zone, which is not anymore a subset of the BD. This is a security zone that can contain endpoints of different bridge domains. So the ESG is, is something that you define per VRF. You can have, of course, uh, multiple ESGs in the same VRF. And like this example shows, you could have endpoints that belong to different bridge domains in the same ESG, and then contracts defined between ESGs, just like you would define contracts between EPGs. But with this model, you can move your security policies to the ESGs and use EPGs primarily as a networking configuration, primarily to map endpoints to bridge domains. So uh, let's look at it in a slightly different way. So let's focus on the security zone we call web and the security zone we call app. They are both in the same VRF, but you could also have them in different VRFs, by the way, uh, because ESGs also work with inter-VRF contracts. And the way you assign workloads to the ESG is by using selectors, just like you would do with micro-segmentation. And as of the ACI photo though release, you can only define this based on IP selectors, so slash R2s or subnets. And EPGs become just a way to map VLANs to the bridge domain. What are the benefits of ESGs? Well, simpler contract configurations, the policy cam utilization is improved as well. And let's take an example to, to understand this concept. So let's imagine that you have the requirement here on the left and the design uh, of web VMs, application VMs as it is on the left of the picture. So you have web VMs on BD1 and BD2, and you have app VMs on BD3 and BD4. Uh, hence, even if these two are the same security zone and these two are the same security zone, you would need four EPGs because the EPG is a child of the bridge domain. So you have EPG for security zone one on BD1, EPG for security zone one on BD2, and EPG for security zone two on BD3, and EPG for security zone two on BD4. So if you need to allow web to talk to app with EPGs, you would need at least four contracts. Now, if you also need to allow free communication between the web servers, you will also need an extra contract between EPG 1.1 and 1.2 and an extra contract between, between EPG 2.3 and 2.4. So we're talking about six contracts. With ESG, to achieve the same result, you need one single contract. So it's a much simpler configuration. It makes usability way better than with EPGs. So ESGs work across BDs within a single VRF. You still need EPGs to map traffic and VLANs to BDEs and as a result to VRFs. And EPGs would be used in this case primarily as a way to map workloads to BDEs and into the VRF. You would still configure contracts between the layer 3 externals, so layer 3 out EPGs and ESGs, so this doesn't change. VZNEs include ESGs too, and you can also use preferred groups. You can also make uh, ESGs and EPGs part of the same preferred group which is a very convenient tool to use for migration. Now, from a deployment perspective, meaning from a hardware configuration perspective, 
ESG contracts and BD subnets are deployed on all the nodes where the VRF is deployed. Route leaking is extremely simple. There's no need anymore for subnets under the provided EPG. So you have more freedom in terms of the EPG configuration. The configuration is cleaner. But that also means that there's no automatic route leaking based on contracts. You wouldn't have to configure under the VRF which routes you want to leak to which VRF. So it makes configuration very clear. It's less confusing. And there's complete decoupling between uh, the control plane route leaking and uh, the security configuration based on the contracts. Now, of course, uh, we are in the first release of uh, ACI for the toe, first release for DSG. So the feature set is not yet complete to the point we want it to be complete. So there's only an IP selector of this release. So you can configure slash read you know, one twenty eight longest prefix match, for instance, slash 24. So it's very flexible IP selector, but you have the IP selector. You don't have yet the max selector. You don't have yet the VM tag selector and so on and so forth. ESGs as business applies only to other traffic. There is no support for ESG to EPG contracts. So except for the lazy out, you cannot have an ESG to an EPG contract. So this is in principle, it's where we want to get anyway. So in the end, you want to be, once all the features are there, uh, you would want to use contracts on ESG and not on EPGs. But it could be a useful feature, of course, for migration purposes. Now, for migration today, what you can do, you can use VZN or you can use preferred groups. You cannot use first generation switches. Uh, but all the EX and newer leaves work. And an ESG contract can be applied for routed traffic with IPS selector. InterVRF service graph between ESGs are not yet implemented. So you can have InterVRF contracts, that works fine, but you cannot have yet service graph on top of InterVRF contracts. And ESG features is not yet integrated with Multisite. This is really where we are right now with this new uh, feature. In the roadmap, we want, of course, to enable more uh, selector, more classification options. So like a BD, Mac or a port, VLAN, which makes it easier to migrate your current EPG configuration to an ESG-based configuration. So PyDadLo delivers the first implementation of ESGs. We want everybody to take a look at this feature. And we want, of course, you customers or partners to take a look at this enhancement. And we think it's a very valuable implementation, very valuable enhancement. But for the real uh, actual deployment, we believe that probably you'll have to upgrade to find out one to get to uh, the full spectrum of the classification options. But it doesn't mean that you cannot use it today. It's just that the, if you're okay with the base classification, then of course you can use it today. But most likely for ease of deployment, ease of migration, you will also need some other classifiers uh, in addition to what has already been uh, implemented.